starting, if you could just tell us some about you know, how, how you came to New Brunswick and how you came to real estate development. Yeah, my name is Omar Borai. I, uh, I came to the United States of America in May 5th, 1970. And I worked with Kimberly Clark for about two years. At that time, I was come over here for just some courses at Rutgers, and uh, I'm graduate from Alexandria University, Faculty of Science, major chemistry and biology, and that 1963, and I worked before I came here for like five years at Suez, S-U-E-Z, Kraft Paper Company. And my company sent me over to Europe for almost a year and a half to two years to Sweden, Finland, uh, West Germany, and Poland. For engineering exchange between two countries, and uh, I learned a lot from there. I saw how the the war done to this country, and when I came to New Brunswick, going back and forth from Old Bridge to. Rutgers and from Highland Park, of course I'm used to live here in Highland Park to Rutgers. I saw the damage what's happening here in New Brunswick. And after that I went to buy a house in East Brunswick uh, in 1974, I believe. 73, 74. And uh, the broker convinced me that since I have a couple language, why don't you come help us? Because we have a lot of Polish and German people in South River and uh, in the area. And uh, I found it might be a good idea. I spoke to my wife and she decided to go ahead and get the license. And uh, I went, I took the license, and uh, after two weeks I started working on some Saturday, Sunday, sometime. And I start to feel like I love the business. And uh, after a while I found out and it's a country of opportunity. <coughs> so I found out the, you know, the monetary type as far as private sector versus public sectors. I was hoping to finish my PhD in uh, biochemistry. But uh, I started working real estate slowly in the weekend, sometimes Saturday, sometimes Saturday, Sunday. And, and I found out this is a kind of business I like to be with the people. And uh, thank God I got my license and I started working. I did very, very well. So I decided. So you, you were a real uh, in a realtor selling houses? Realtor selling houses in the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I found out that I'm making twice as much or three times as much as what I should work in the club. Besides the fact that the club treated me very, very well. And, uh, but I decided to proceed in the real estate and uh, I quit the chemistry and after 1972 to 74 that's, and after that I start, I got my own office in real estate in 1976. And that was located where? In 257 Livingston Avenue in New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, thank God we start working real estate uh, as a boy, realty. So, excuse me, you were working with another company from 72 to 76? 74. To 74, uh, okay. Yeah, no, 72 to 70, you're right, 76. Six. Okay, and then in 76 you got your own office, and, office and uh, left the other company. Left the other company. Uh, and after well, that, during that time, um, your memories or impressions of New Brunswick at that time? I start like New Brunswick because I saw Rutgers University. I saw the two hospital. I saw the Cook College in the other side of town. I saw uh, Squibb Pharmaceutical uh, at that time. It is, I saw a lot of potential because of the train station. The uh, close by for the turn bike, Route 1, uh, 287, Route 27, close by Princeton University here. And uh, we have a lot of pharmaceutical company around the area. And I figured New Brunswick is a place. You have Johnson Johnson in New Brunswick. At that time, during 1970, 475, I'll start dealing with some people from Johnson Johnson to acquire some of the property here. So uh, that put the weight on me that this is a place to grow. And I saw that during 1974, 75, where it is your income, five, six pounds, whatever you to do there. And we saw the activity and you know, reliability, we're working with Radkas, we're working with uh, Johnson Johnson, working with the hospital. So after that, in the early 76, I started buying, selling some real estate, I started building small houses. So it is re renovating. That was in New, Br in New Brunswick. And uh, early 80, I... Uh, I could ask, was it hard at that time for either you or others to secure mortgages in New Brunswick? That was no problem, no problem. because uh, at that time, outside New Brunswick was tough. Inside New Brunswick was good, because we've been dealing with VA and FHA. Uh, people from outside New Brunswick, they don't know how to deal with VE and FHA. They used to come, ask me as a consultant for this, mm -hmm. and uh, because we used to specialize in mm -hmm. VE, FHA. Mm -hmm. And uh, really there was some, several programs from New Jersey HMFA at that time. Uh, lease was an option to buy, a lot of other programs came. So thank God it is in the ATI, uh, I bought the 390 Georgia Street. And that what put the idea, or concrete, cemented the idea as far as developing this lot, this block over here. And I started talking with the city. The city said, you're welcome. And I, I, uh, we started buying the property here, and uh, we developed Albany Street Plaza, Tower One, at that time. And uh, later on, we developed Tower Two, and we start moving into Spring Street and, and uh, Somerset um, Aspire building. We renovated uh, some building around here. 358 uh, George Street, mm -hmm. which was three buildings together. I put them in one building and uh, it was good. Renovated the uh, 390, which is like 60,000 square feet, put it together. Uh, things wasn't that great at that time, but 
when you have, when you're optimistic about something, and uh, you're encouraged to see Johnson & Johnson coming to the town, encouraged to see Rutgers expanding the town, encouraged to see Robert Wood at that time used to be in Middlesex County mm -hmm. uh, Hospital. Uh, so it is really this, all of this uh, encourage you more that you are in the right town and you are in the right business. And thank God, we did very, very well. So you mentioned going back to the 70s that you were working with J and J, and you mentioned working with the hospital. What what did you do? Acquiring property, land acquisition. For their expansion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Do you? How do you? I guess, who, who do you think were the key participants in the redevelopment of New Brunswick? We have uh, two people here. It is uh, Johnson Johnson start the engine. Mm -hmm. And after that, things start moving in the right direction between us and the okay. And, uh, you know, and Rutgers. The hospital. So, what, what do you think would have happened if J and J had moved, had left us? Uh, if they have moved and left us, I don't think New Brunswick would be the way it is right now. Honestly. Even though the other components were still here, Rutgers, the hospitals. The everyone county. looking for Godfather is <laughs> Johnson Johnson. And when she mentioned to any tenant of Johnson Johnson across the street from us, that means you are in the right place. Mm -hmm. And your your thoughts on why they stayed? Stayed because there is uh, some people like uh, uh, Jim Burke and uh, uh, Dick Seller, God bless his soul. And same with the Jim Burke also. They're good people. They believed in New Brunswick. They felt like they like to fulfill the promise or dream of the Robert Wood Johnson uh, dream as far expand in New Brunswick since he started in New Brunswick. And John Helder. John, John Heldridge came after that, and uh, a lot of other people came, but the guy who did uh, start moving to a redevelopment of New Brunswick was Dick Seller. And uh, we're lucky to have at that time good mayor, open-minded mayor, which is John Lynch at the time. And uh, they put things together and things start move in that direction. So your your impressions of, of Mayor John Lynch and his connection to the redevelopment? Yeah, he has a vision. There's mm -hmm. not so many mayors around they do have that vision. Mm -hmm. Like John Lynch, he had it at that time. Dick Seller, of course, has a vision. Uh, also, the hospital side, you have uh, uh, Harvey Holzberg. Mm -hmm. He has a vision of how to expand, how to do things the right way. Uh, that's very important. If you have limited budget or you have something like that, you know how to do it directly in order to get more profit you fast. And I believe it is that's where is visionary people like this, with the help also of Middlesex County at that time. David Krebiel has the same vision. Why not expand New Brunswick? Because we have all this catalyst in New Brunswick. So all of this help. Mm -hmm. Your the role of the American City Corporation and their planning. It did help a lot, mm -hmm. at least give us which direction we should go, which 
idea you could apply in New Brunswick because every city is different than the other. So that gave us some vision or help us to direct our vision to the right direction. And uh, what about the your uh, perspective on the on the J and J headquarters that was built. You know, we were static when uh, they initially uh, agreed to go joint venture with the city of New Brunswick to build the high regency hotel. That was, I believe, in 1978, 79, mm -hmm. late 70s, mm -hmm. and after that. Key in Johnson & Johnson in 1981. Mm -hmm. Because we start here acquiring property 82-83 and then we start construction in 85. At that time they were using urban development action grants. Do you think that was important in terms of what happened? Uh, Johnson & Johnson? Uh, and the Hyatt? Another, no, another Hyatt, uh, I don't think uh, Hyatt at that time there was urban development plan. I believe there was maybe some money from urban mm -hmm. development because we used here two and a half million dollars. The project down the street used like three and a half million dollars mm -hmm. from urban development. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that would be you know using the two and a half three million dollars. That in essence was a grant that reduced the cost of the project, is that? Uh, it wasn't grant to us. Right. Mm -hmm. The right. money went back to the city of right. So the grant was to the city, who, yes. the, who then lent you that money and you repaid the city yes. and they recycled We apply it. for it Yes. and uh, we got the money mm -hmm. and we have to pay it back to the city, and which we did in full. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of that over help help you in order to get two and a half million dollars okay. uh, with uh, no cost. Okay. So uh, it was less costly than than than, than would be part of the fine the regular finance. That's correct. On that. So so one of the early redevelopment projects was the Hyatt and then Hiram Market. So your impression. I was involved or, or in recollection Market. of that. I almost acquired almost maybe over 80% of the higher market, mm -hmm. maybe 75%, 80% of the higher market, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by, uh, you know, meeting with Mr. Dixell out of his mm -hmm. office and he asked me to help them, which I did. Mm -hmm. Now some people think that it should have been preserved because it was a historic site. It was completely deteriorated. It is a king uh, building what you think it should be to uh, preserve, preserve, it was in terrible shape. All of it? Yes. So it would have been too expensive to try to rebuild what was there? That's correct. But do you think this, the same decision would be made today, you know, looking at this now more of a sense of trying to encourage adaptive reuse, you know, have interesting older buildings, or do you think that, that if was, that the was older more building, at the time? If the older building has some character, mm -hmm. and you can save it, and in a good, solid condition, mm -hmm. yes, you should keep it. Mm -hmm. But if the older building is deteriorated, no matter what you do with it, it's unsafe, uh, I, I personally feel we should, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, remove it and replace it with something nice. Mm -hmm. Because by the end of the day, it's a cost. Mm -hmm. How much it costs you to do this building, and how much is the return as an investor, and it is, uh, that, that's very important. Your thoughts on Memorial Homes and the, and the replacement with the Hope Six? I believe this was a good idea because Memorial Home uh, was in a very, very bad shape. And there was a lot of uh, 
element there which is for drugs and all the stuff used to come from there. It was uh, whatever left after the riot, the problem and everything stayed in this area. And I believe that was the, the city and the federal government, everybody trying to do their best to do something. Uh -huh. But unsafe condition is dangerous. Elevators, you go in the elevator, the elevator stop, fix it, and stop again. A uh, lot of unsafe condition in the building. Uh, so I believe the time came to be removing. And nationwide, high rise, affordable, never work. You mentioned with the riot or near riot in New Brunswick, the, your recollection of that? Yes. And, and, May, and Mayor Pat Sheehan's role? In, in Mayor Pat Sheehan, it is, she did what she can before her used to be Mayor Polos. And uh, I believe after that it was uh, Dick Mulligan and then John Mitch. Uh, when you have the city completely between every house, this house burned down. Every uh, between the other side, the vacant house, is the other one is the roof is falling apart. It is you have to do something to clean it and start from scratch to build some nicer. Because the kids, young kids, they like to open their eyes to some to see something nice, beautiful nice flowers around their, in front of their homes or something like that. And that's very healthy for the kids. And I believe that was the right decision just to clean and start. And, and your, any recollections of, there were a few nights of disturbance in the city? Absolutely, were, there was... Uh, your recollections of that? Uh, I would say it is during my, uh, when uh, I started construction, here, Albany City Plaza, Tower One. Uh, it was very difficult for security. Uh, we have a lot of problems in the beginning. A uh, lot of robbery during even the daytime, like four o'clock when employees walking out of their building offices. And uh, the safety came after that when a lot of people start walking in the street. There's a lot of restaurants came in. A lot of shops opened their doors. Then there was some safety. And, and what, what, what led to that? In other words, why were the restaurants coming in? Because it's office building here. Mm -hmm. It's office building across the street. People start to feel there is at least a couple hundred people working here in this office building. They have to go to eat someplace. Mm -hmm. They start opening shops. Nighttime, Start the people start walking in, in seven, eight, nine o'clock. Uh, before that, after four o'clock, the city was dead. After the county uh, uh, get out mm -hmm. and the city closed, the city is dead. Mm -hmm. And the role of the cultural center and your memories or impressions as it. I would say it was a great uh, help from Johnson Johnson because he gave us some grant money in the beginning and also uh, Middlesex County gave us some grant money there and uh, all this old movie for uh, State Theatre and the other uh, uh, George Steve Playhouse used to be YMCA. And uh, it did help a lot. Mm -hmm. Start bringing more people downtown, and more people start walking down the street. Though the safety start coming slowly, until things start to develop around it. Where do you see New Brunswick today, and where do you see it in the future? I believe with this New Brunswick today, we are going in the right direction. It is uh, because of the stability 
of the governor, government agency in New Brunswick. Uh, like you see after Mayor uh, and Senator uh, John Lynch, uh, Mayor Cahill came in, Jim Cahill, and he's been there for almost what, 25 years now. It, that makes the city stable for redevelopment because unfortunately politics sometimes is dirty when you have uh, some council people they like to do this the other one they do that opposite direction uh, it takes you a long time to develop anything and development means money time is money you cannot plan a project, take you five years to do it. You lose your shot. So the administration from day one, they knew what the word meaning by redevelopment. John Lynch put it and Dick Seller and all the other people put it in such a way that this is the way we should go forward. So you, you, you've worked in other New Jersey cities. How would you compare how redevelopment is happening there versus how it's happening in New Brunswick? Or it's happened in New Honestly, Brunswick? is in New Brunswick, people understand uh, the development. In other cities, it depends on the government of this particular city, whether it's ward thing. Ward is every, every council person responsible for this ward. Sometimes they gang against each other, sometimes mm -hmm. they work together. Over here, I believe it is easy to do things uh, sometimes than the other side. But so far, we never had any problems. Uh, uh, we work in Newark, we work in, in, uh, in uh, AC, we work in a lot of other areas. Mm -hmm. So far, it is. You have this as a plan, and you have to proceed with it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But over here, you can move it fast, in the Because, like I said, the steady of the government, or stability of the government system here. Did you have any um, opposition, or feeling of opposition, in either building this building or Spring Street? Because Spring Street was an unusual building for New Brunswick. Yes. Uh, honestly, it is. It is. Uh, sometime when you start doing something strange to the, the area, uh, when I decided to do this building, some opposition came and said, "Well, it's, it, this guy is going to fail. It's going to this and that." But then it succeeded, and after the success of this building, everyone start looking. Mm -hmm. Albany Street has been successful. Mm -hmm. Why not start something else? The things start moving in the right direction. After that, when I decided to build Tower 2, uh, you know, people just feel the same thing. Why we build too much, so many square feet office space here? But we need it. In order to grow, you have to have office space. Office space is going to bring you more employees and those employees need apartment and such and such. And when I start building the Spring Street, there was some opposition. The building is going to block every other direction of, this, of the people around. But later on, it is built, found out it was a great loss to the city of Brunswick, what was the first most successful project in the history of the city of Brunswick at that time. It's, uh, we brought something which nobody else had it. We did not just come and build just a small apartments. It here is it. Let us start see how house come to work. We study it and we are in a market. We figure this is a market for it and we decided to. And your impressions of two new recent projects, Gateway and then Wellness, Wellness Center building? When the center building is a, just a parking garage, plus you have the, uh, the food store downstairs. 
unfortunately for the store feel mm -hmm. uh, that's one in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, the upstairs, which is the hospital leasing the space up there, mm -hmm. the one in the center is that's the only thing is making the project mm -hmm. struggling to survive. And, but, uh, and with the supermarket not initially making it, does that reflect difficulties of having an urban supermarket, or what is what is your perspective on that? We need something, food store downtown. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about that for a long time. When you have an uh, apartment downtown, you need some food store. Uh, maybe the location was the right location. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be the reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe the location was not the right one, is that what you said? Yeah, in my opinion. Where do you think a better location would be? No, I mean, it is, you could have it in such area, it is easy to access, easy to mm -hmm. see, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently the guy, the operator, start to go for the first few months yeah. and start to have bad product after that. Right. And I believe it could be that's the reason he might yeah. fail or his mm -hmm. failure. Because uh, I can hear from a lot of people that they went to good stuff, yeah. wasn't the right stuff. Yeah. Like uh, ABC, you can consider his product is to be C and D. Yeah. And right. that's not right. Because people around here are all professional. Uh, they know what to buy outside. Mm -hmm. Should give me the same respect. They give me the same. Don't be greedy. Make money. And the gateway project. Gateway project is good. It is. Uh, we need uh, to do something around the train station. And gateways was good idea. And uh, I'm glad it's successful. And we have the other aspire building that we're building right now. Is going to be very successful, inshallah, God willing. Uh, so it is needed next to the train station. So the, there was also some issue there with some preservationists wanted to preserve some of the existing buildings where Gateway was. Yes. Did, did you see any alternative to what happened? Could you have had a more of a mix of the older buildings and, and the new? Like I said, I don't know the condition. Okay of the building you're talking about, uh, which was in the mm -hmm. corner there. Right. It looks from outside good, but I don't know what's mm -hmm. the key of it. And your sense of um, DEFCO's role in the redevelopment? I believe it is DEFCO working with the city of New Brunswick, and this is the direction that the city is looking for. And DEFCO just uh, proceed. So, if coming back to, to something I was mentioning earlier, you were you mentioned earlier your impressions of New Brunswick back in the 70s. Yes. You know, you mentioned crime and other issues, and your impressions of New Brunswick today and New, and where New Brunswick will be in the future. I could. I believe we are going in the right direction. It is the safety in the city of New Brunswick is is very good. Uh, the number of newcomers to the city of Brunswick is very good. We have a lot of good uh, professional people coming to living in New Brunswick. I believe there are several projects that being built on OTT, uh, two different projects there. It is all fully booked or leased that show that the sign you were feeling safety in the project. And it's close to the train station, close to Route 1, close to the turnpike, everything. Mm -hmm. So that's a good sign that the economy in New Brunswick is healthy. And, and many of these projects used a payment in lieu of taxes. Yes. You, you were, you know, we were your thoughts one on of that? the first uh, or the second year get this uh, move taxes because that's needed. Mm -hmm. Needed if you like to develop something and you are paying high wages for the union. Mm -hmm. You have to 
get things to, 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 to pay off your debts. So you need fixed taxes for certain number of years in order to calculate your risk. Because you don't want to build a building and the city comes over here, they have some budget problem, raise it 15%, 20%, put you out of business. Uh, and that's what's been doing right now all over the state of New Jersey and in, your, in the, all different areas. Mm -hmm. So now that's not really in lieu of taxes, that's tax abatement, is that right? Tax abatement, and it is in lieu of taxes. I see, same. okay. Yeah, it's just that they call it so. So uh, am I hearing two advantages? First, it's more predictable because you know for a certain period of time what the payment is. That's correct. And, and also that the payment is maybe somewhat less than what it would be under standard property taxes. Is that is that That's the correct. correct understanding? That's correct. Okay. So going back to the other buildings, Gateway and some of the other ones, including your new one, um, does Mick, the, the new ones going up seem to be more apartments than condos. Yes. Do you have a view on why that's happening? <clears throat> Condo market has been dead since uh, 2007. Okay, do you see that it's going to come back? Economy. It's going to come back, but uh, people nowadays, all young uh, generation, young kids, mm -hmm. they feel living in condo is they are safe, better. There's no other obligation in the top of head as far you as You mean being in an apartment? An apartment, yeah, sorry. Right. Being in an apartment. And being one payment per month, I don't need to pay taxes, I don't need uh, to pay condo fees, I don't need to pay nothing. Mm -hmm. So that is the same like house. Mm -hmm. People leaving their houses coming to live in an apartment because they feel like they have one payment. So there are a few condos in Gateway. There are a few in the Heldridge. But that's about it, I guess, yes. the rest are apartments. There's another new apartment building going up behind the Elks Club, apparently. Yeah, apartment building. Right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, condo, like I said, it's been almost dead uh, since 2007 uh, because of this factor, economy factor. People lost their job. A lot of things happened, and uh, the people like to move in to be safe. I like to pay one payment. Mm -hmm. and that's, it. that's the reason apartment building is going across the nation, not only in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. All apartment. Yes. You mentioned earlier the the role of Rutgers in the redevelopment. Some further thoughts? You know how Rutgers was part of or not the redevelopment that occurred? Broadcast was very important part of the redevelopment of New Brunswick because you have almost over 50,000 kids coming to Broadcast every year and uh, with staff, with people working at Broadcast as far as all kinds of service back and forth. And uh, that would help the redevelopment here. Uh, people looking for apartments, looking for condo. That's Rutgers. And what about Rutgers at one time was not other than on its campus in New Brunswick, and then that changed? Some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, it changed because of the fact it is the name of New Brunswick is like magnet to Rutgers. Versa Biscataway. Yeah. <laughs> That's, with my respect, that is the main reason for that. Mm -hmm. The magnet of New Brunswick, New Brunswick has a train station, you know, New Brunswick has two hospitals, New Brunswick has a lot of things to offer. That's the reason Rutgers, they came up with the idea, they built so many things in Biscataway, but their name wasn't moving, the academic thing wasn't moving until they start doing something in New Brunswick and the academic mm -hmm. things start going up. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody right now fighting to get his kids to Rutgers mm -hmm. because they joined the 10, uh, uh, 
Town. Big, Big Ten, Ten Conference, right. Uh, conference, so we should add a lot. And the leadership also in New Brunswick right now is uh, with President Barshi in, uh, he has scientific vision. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mean a lot when you visualize things around you. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the pre previous presidents, they don't have this vision. Have mm -hmm. a President Blaustein? Blaustein was excellent, really. Unfortunately, we lost him too yeah. early. Mm -hmm. But he was a leader, good man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were talking earlier on New Brunswick the way it used to be, and you started talking about New Brunswick today. Yes. Where do you see New Brunswick in the future? New Brunswick will be the same like Hoboken and all this area because you have a lot of young kids start coming to New Brunswick. A lot of kids from Rutgers graduate and stay, they like to stay in New Brunswick because of the accessibility of the transportation and everything uh, in New Brunswick. Do you think, as Jim Hughes would say, do you think it's going to be a hot city? <laughs> it will be, and I agree city, with uh, uh, Mr. Dean, uh, Jim Hughes, I always respect his opinion. Yeah. He's a man whose vision, uh, I hope, and I hope from bottom of my heart, people outside will listen to him, his advice as far as the redevelopment. Because with his vision, he visualized everything during his, all his experience. Mm -hmm. we, should, we should really mm -hmm. uh, value that and we should, you know, get part of it. It is, he's a man with vision. Well, over the last 10 years, there's been this change of younger people not wanting to go live out in the suburbs and own a house, but they want to live in, in, a, in a city. Yes. <clears throat> I'm not sure that at yet whether they would choose New Brunswick over Hoboken, but you think it's going to be I believe it's that. coming. I believe it's coming. It is, uh, look at the uh, Blostein School yeah. of Art. Everybody fight to get Basically. into it. It is their the position academically, it is top first or second in the country or something like that. I did some article about it. What, what, what about more senior households? Uh, senior household, yes, is coming. We do have several senior homes in New Brunswick. But uh, to create the activity and everything, it is a developer looking for return on his money. Senior building, it could be governmental help. Without governmental help, you cannot build it. I'm not going beyond a building age restricted, just more generally as a market of aging baby boomers. Do you see that being a market of, where, of New Brunswick in the future? I would say yes. There's a lot of senior start coming to New Brunswick because they like to be close to the hospitals. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have the art center here. Mm -hmm. You have the train station. They like to go to New York, to Philadelphia. A uh, lot, I can see a lot of seniors start coming to New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. Looking back with 2020 hindsight, things with 2020 hindsight that may have been done differently? I would say so far, we are going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have to choose back, I'll do the same thing I did mm -hmm. all this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't just referring to your actions, but just more broadly, what, what, what the hospital could have done, what, what the uh, city could have done, what the county could have done, what the university could have done, just any thoughts I would say that? it is, uh, we like to see the hospital expand more here in New Brunswick. The hospital so far acquired several other hospitals, which is a good sign that the hospital is very healthy. Uh, uh, St. Barbara's, I believe they are about to close the deal. They close the deal on Somerset Hospital, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll, we'll get more hospital. 
But you, you think then downtown New Brunswick, they should do more expanding? I will say yes. I'd like to see the hospital expand here downtown New Brunswick. I'd like to see a lot expand downtown New Brunswick. I'd like to see the New Brunswick is the, the piece of, of Diamond, which is rotating in every direction, every, attracting everybody to come in. So how transferable do you think is the New Brunswick redevelopment to other cities? Uh, we over here, because of the governmental government of the, the city itself, it is they are the one they trying to direct difficult to do this or that because of their vision. Other town, they don't have that. We're lucky to have this situation where it is in a scope, full cooperation between everybody. So I'm hearing it may be less transferable because other communities may not have that same stability of government. That's or, correct. Or That's correct. Some other area I can hear that they've been trying to do this project for the last 20 years. Some area they've been trying to do this project for 10, 15 years. Because the fight between the council people, he is the council for the, oh, this ward, versus second ward, versus third ward, there's a fifth ward, a sixth ward, I like it in my, my ward, this and that. Right. The fight prolong the idea, make the developers say, what the heck with you, let me go someplace else. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, redevelopment is time and money. Mm -hmm. What about the size of the city? You know, some people have said that New Brunswick, out of 50, 60,000 population, there's just more you can do than in a much larger city. So, so like what you do resonates more. Is, do you think that that's a factor at all? Well, it is. New Brunswick is surrounded by Highland Park on one side, by Somerset on one side, North Brunswick the other side, and East Brunswick the, uh, the other side of the one. Is it is small? Is not big city. So is small better or worse? <laughs> no, small better because you can control it. You can control every part of it. It is, uh, you know what the people need. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, it's easy to control. As mm -hmm. opposed to New York? As opposed to big city like mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. big city like your city. Uh, it's easy to control here. Mm -hmm. yeah. so what do you think are the remaining major challenges to, to New Brunswick? We like to see people come back to live in New Brunswick. We have so far so many. You mean people who had once lived in New Brunswick to come back? To come back. We like to see it in stability on the taxes. We like to see, uh, which has been sta almost stable mm -hmm. all this year. And. Uh, I believe so far we are going in the right direction. I'd like to see some development go to go toward George Street, the other side of George Street. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean between Heldrick and Douglas? Between Heldrick and Douglas, yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see some stuff like this. Because this is a front mirror mm -hmm. of the city of New Brunswick. Any people coming to New Brunswick come in either through the George Street or through Commercial Avenue or through uh, New Street. You like to see something to impress, mm -hmm. and I see George Street needs some mm -hmm. upgrade. W what about with education? Uh, this really is a very tough subject because it's sad that we haven't spent that much time and money. Uh, we build a new school, but school doesn't build generation. I'd rather stay in old school and get the right teacher in order to teach the kids the right thing, in order to get a new generation. Mm -hmm. Sometime when you build just 
van school here there and just to be a fancy thing with it. It doesn't help. I rather concentrate in educating the kids, educating their family. Because if I leave their family uneducated, the kids they will absorb a lot of stuff from their family. And I rather get the two together to get the father, the mother, and the kids working together. When I come back from school as a kid, five, six years old, my father asked me, what did you do in school today? My mom will ask me, let me help you in the, your homework or something. But mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. It is, mm -hmm. we can do it in the project. We can. Mm -hmm. If we put a little bit extra effort. Mm -hmm. And what do you think that extra effort might, might consist of? Uh, extra effort, try to see if we can get the parent to participate. Yeah. That's extra effort. Mm -hmm. Get the parent to participate. Uh, since we were talking about schools, your, your recollection of how um, there used to be a regional high school with North Brunswick, Covington, and Brunswick. Yes. So when that stopped, yes. what impact did that have? That? It did leave negative reflect in New Brunswick mm -hmm. since they separated. Uh, I hope will be some kind of participation in the future between New Brunswick, Milltown, and North Brunswick, mm -hmm. or Hanna Park, mm -hmm. to get the mix going. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. my personal opinion. And, and with the new high school, do you think it would have been better to have tried to place it more in a central location of, of the city? I would say it will help if you can do that, but it, it's done already. The, the building vision for what's going to replace um, Fair and Deck, mm -hmm. do you believe that that will happen anytime soon? I hope it will, <laughs> to reflect on all of us. Mm -hmm. Do you know much about? I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, uh, nobody discuss it with me. Any other? So what's the memories you'd like to share about the redevelopment? In the no, I'd like to see this as far as the, to, to hopefully we'll have some good tenants here and uh, good vision how to fill the space for uh, the Farron Deck. Mm -hmm. It should be participated by two or three different developers, mm -hmm. you know, in order each one of them could be competition is healthy. Your success is my success, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes when... So what would be like some ideal tenants to come to the to a new Farron deck that you think would, would have a major impact? Uh, to Farron deck it is, uh, we need some new tenant for office space. You need some tenant for, uh, you yeah. know, condo, office mm -hmm. building. Apartment building, so a, 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 a mix use, so mix use. That's the right way, but we should really do it in such a way to leave good impression when you're walking out of the train station about what's the city of New Brunswick all about. Mm -hmm. Why I said that we might be better than than uh, some of the others down in North Jersey, Hoboken, mm -hmm. all the stuff. Once you walk into the train station. And I hope one of these days we should renovate the train station, make it beautiful, uh -huh. okay? And uh, in my opinion, it should have open space in the area, there. Uh, it's a kind of thing. Well, how did you And I believe people? one of the architects, he would make uh, Spring Street as Boulevard. Yes. Right. We like to see this to happen, mm -hmm. to connect church uh, to connect Spring Street to Eastern Avenue. Mm -hmm. It should be happening. Mm -hmm. uh, why the street? Uh, why the sidewalk? Not to build just because we like to put some blocks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, how did you attract people to your offices at the time? Because that must have been that was early on when you built this building. 
Yes. Too. It attracted him because I always mentioned Johnson & Johnson, Rutgers, Hospital. Mm -hmm. That's what attracted more people to come here. And, and that was important in terms of getting financing for yes. the building? Yes. That, that, so the lenders recognized? Yeah. Either they come, they recognize, when they see in front of you Johnson Johnson, Johnson Johnson. Uh, it, is, it is really the hospital, the Rutgers, mm -hmm. uh, all of this give them the energy to say, yes, that's the right thing. Okay, just, I don't know if any further thoughts? Or no, we are honored to see you here today, and uh, I'm glad that you are collecting some more information about the history of this. My loved city of New Brunswick, yes. and uh, we're honored to be with you. Well, thank you. Great, thank it's my you. My pleasure. Let's stop. I'll go stop this. <clears throat> so, um, so we've been trying to better understand many of the questions that we've spoken to you again.